I want to look at a separate area. So that was looking at from an oxygen carrying point of view. This is looking at the effect of oral breathing in children. So children who mouth breathe develop craniofacial changes which affects their airways. So a child who is mouth breathing is not going to be an athlete when they grow up. If you look at athletes and you look at their jaw structure, you will see the best athletes have a common jaw structure. Now I'm not talking about Michael Phelps. Um, because in swimming, swimmers are actually doing what we're doing. So they get away with the poor craniofacial changes. And there's no coincidence that most swimmers, a lot of them are asthmatics. Because it's the only sport that they can do that's helping to keep. A an asthmatic will have difficulty competing during running. They can compete during swimming because of the hypercapnic response. Their face is in the water. The water is pressing up against their chest and tummy. They're staying underwater for longer periods of time. So they're doing this without knowing it. But if you look at soccer players, soccer players, you see generally good facial features, strong jaws, jaws that are coming forward, that are not coming back in on the airways. So this is a Brazilian study. It's a 2011 study. And it's evaluate exercise tolerance, respiratory muscle strength, and body posture, and mouth breathing versus nasal breathing children. So they excluded people with conditions such as asthma, neurological, chronic respiratory conditions, cardiac conditions, etc. Of the 107 children studied, 45 were mouth breathers and 62 were nasal breathers. The examination revealed that 80% of the mouth breathing children and 48.4% of nasal breathing children had abnormal cervical posture and breathing patterns. The researchers concluded that mouth breathing children had cervical spine postural changes and decreased respiratory muscle strength compared with nasal breathing. Mouth breathers tend to have a forward head posture because their airways are smaller due to the craniofacial changes that they push their head forward to compensate. And it's pushing the head forward that's having the effect on the spine and that in turn is setting themselves up. And it was a dentist who told me this a number of years ago, I was talking to him. And he said, look at the Olympics. And this wasn't the London, it was the Beijing Olympics. He said, I looked on the podium and I looked, as a dentist, he was able to see the, the jaws. He said, I looked at the athletes, one, two, and three in every sport. And every one of them had good definition of the jaws. If you were a mouth breathing child, you wouldn't be up there on that podium. So it's really important. If, if to, you know, to recognize the effect of mouth breathing and nasal breathing. This is a different study, 92 children between 8 and 12 years of age, 30 were mouth breathers, 6 were nasal breathers. I'm assuming that that might be 60 actually, or 62, there's something missing there. The, the study concluded that mouth breathing negatively affected respiratory biomechanics and exercise capacity. So there's a huge, you know, for, for, this is a great motivation for kids. You have a parent coming in. Now you can show, yes, if the child is mouth breathing, it's affecting their sports. If the child is mouth breathing, it's affecting their concentration. If the child is mouth breathing, it's affecting their sleep. It's affecting craniofacial changes. It's causing crooked teeth. It's affecting their asthma. So this paper here, 306 mouth breathing children and 124 nasal breathing children, they found that postural problems were significantly more common. So posture, again, you know the mouth breathers, everything posture is affected. Um, highlighting the need for early interdisciplinary treatment of this syndrome. Interestingly, researchers noted that mouth breathers were more likely to be male. Good photograph. Where was Buteyko from? So it's, you'll often see with Kenyan athletes, Sonia Ross Richards, she lives in the States. Um, but Kenyan athletes are actually living at relatively high altitude. And there are stories that some of their training involves, they take a mouthful of water and they run 10 miles and they have to bring that mouthful of water to the base. So from a structural point of view, you see the girl on their left. We were just looking at craniofacial changes. You see her jaws. She's got really strong looking jaws, the girl on, your, on the left here. She's got a wide facial structure and you see that she's got larger nostrils. 
So from a craniofacial point of view, you see that there's far less tension there for her to take in a breath. Who do you think is going to be more breathless of the two, the girl on the left or the girl on the right? Who is more breathless? You will know by this, when you suck in air, this moves in. So you can just compare that and you'll see it's more pronounced, there's more tension here. You see the tension on her face. She's relaxed. This has moved in to some extent, but not near as much as in this instance here. She has narrow nostrils compared to that girl there, wider nostrils. This is tendencies for a more narrow facial structure as opposed to um, the wider facial structure. 